abandon hope before we enter here. Now take the next right and then right again. So it's going to take long. Well, I see nothing has changed in Dead Man's Gulch. the ferry. Ah, we're not going to the Isle of Wight. What do you mean? Well, I wanted to surprise you. I recognized it in the Daily Mail. Come on. Where'd you get the keys? Was Miss Malpass's bungalow? Who's Miss Malpass? <laughs> My maths teacher. Oh, I see. Westingsea Girls High. I was tennis captain two years running, but she never, ever invited me to tea. Oh, I see. That was the big deal, was it? Sunday tea with muffins and Miss Malpass. Well, she invited every other girl to tea, but never me. I hated that woman. Ah, school teachers. <laughs> well, what do you think? Hey? What about? You promised me a holiday home. You're not. You're not seriously thinking of buying this shack. I thought Cornwall was our dream. The beach on our doorstep, the sun, the sea. What more do you want? <gasps> You couldn't buy wallpaper like this, Hugh. No, not with the damp already printed on it. Oh, and look, Hugh, Hugh, look. Genuine arts and crafts. Look at that. Look, look. Hugh. Besides, I'm getting my own back. Well, I've heard of people bearing grudges, but never buying one. It's my money. There's no answer to that. Hmm. Well, I would like you to take me to the West Cliff now, please. You? Daddy's bench was here, Hugh. Unless I'm going bad. The seat was placed here by the Honourable Clara Prendergast that the weary might find rest. Amen to that, Clara. Why are you sitting down? Oh, My father's seat isn't here, unless that old woman is sitting on it. Cecily, sit down. Huh? Look, we, we haven't lived here for what? 35 years, more. Things change. We used to sit here on the seat together. Dedicated to the people of Westingsea by Alderman Cecil Collins in gratitude for their trust and friendship. <laughs> People used to raise their hats to my father as they passed or stop and speak. <laughs> it was a bit like holding court. You were his royal princess, huh? My father never minded not having a son. He never blamed my mother for it. Is she gonna sit there forever? Hmm? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, my wife is looking for a, a, a particular seat. I'm, I'm sorry. I wonder if I can. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm in the way. No, sorry. I'm afraid 
I'm always in the way these days. Rupert Moore gave this seat to Westing in thanks for his deliverance. I was in prison and he came unto me, Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. Um, my wife's father was Alderman Cecil Collins. He had a seat somewhere oh dear, here. I'm afraid the Alderman seat is no longer here. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Okay. Well, the old lady says that his seat is, is no longer here. They have removed my father's seat. She's sitting on somebody called Rupert Moore, who was in prison and let out or something. There's a quotation from the Bible, thanks for his deliverance. Rupert Moore, are you sure? Yeah. Rupert Moore? Yes, Rupert Moore, it says on the seat. Rupert Moore was a murderer who poisoned his wife. It's true, it's true, Rupert Moore, the Rupert Moore. My God, my father would never allow a seat dedicated to a murderer. No. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'd like you to look at something for oh, me. I've asked the Japanese couple to take a six-month lease on the Burnham Terrace. I thought we agreed not to let the Burnham Terrace until we were sure where we'd be. Oh, well. Uh, thank you. Just put those boxes in here, will you? I am sure. Well, I suppose I should be grateful. It's not a year. Well, you'll have time to do up the bungalow. OK. Thanks. Why do people think that builders enjoy building? There, there, in their bathroom. No, 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 not that. That. I want that removed as soon as possible. Oh, what's wrong with it? Not where Miss Malpass parked her behind. Thank you very much. It's not too late to change your mind, you know, and go home. Westing Sea is home, Hugh. We have come home where we belong. I hated living here. My adolescence was a nightmare, stuck in this godforsaken dump. Oh, and that included me too, did it? No, you. You know it didn't. Well, I don't know. You tell me. You were the one good thing that happened to me here. The one wonderful, beautiful thing mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. Don't you remember how much we both wanted to get out of Westing? As I remember, I was very happy here. My father wanted to give you a job. That would have been a life sentence. The alderman's boot on my neck. My father never wore boots in his life. You! Uh, you! Mm. Remember Hugh, don't you? Oh, how are you doing, old chap? All contributions gratefully received. Are you are uh, <clears throat> advertising something. I am attired thus. In honour of the birthday of that most noble lady, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. God bless her. Really? Yes. She must be quite flattered. 
<laughs> Gonna offer an old friend a drink, are you? Yeah. Would you like a drink? No, no. Allow me. Leonard, a bottle of your very finest for a champagne lady, if you please. Mr. Colt, sir, I don't think... Then no, don't think. Just get on with it. What? <laughs> Come on, this way, my lady. Here we are, then. <laughs> well, what brings you back to dear old Westing Holiday. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, we have bought a summer home here. Sweet little bungalow, little haven road. Well, this is absolutely bloody marvellous. This calls for a double celebration. Yes. No, allow me. <laughs> it takes an old gunner to fire off the big one. <laughs> oh! oh. Ah, do you see that? <laughs> Sorry about this, sir. Howard Arnold's a character, or a bloody scrounger. Depends which way you look at it. I went to school with Cottle. Then you'll know him, sir. Mm. Oh, I know him all right. He stole my three-cent Cameroons. But on the stones down there, I mean, <laughs> the stones on your bare bum. I really what? think we should be making a move. Oh, no. No, we'll eat lunch here. Find me a menu. Uh, Come on. Allow me. <laughs> Arnold, no, you My mustn't. pleasure, madam. <laughs> I wish you hadn't told me about the bungalow. You're jealous. I just rather we didn't get involved with Arnold Collins. Um, there we are, my lord. Mm. <laughs> There you are, then, says. Saddle up your white horse. What are you talking about, Arnold? You were always the one for civic duty, right? Then put on your armour and ride this injustice. Oh, well, I just want that foul seat removed and my father's seat restored. And then expose the woman who aided and abetted a murderer. What woman? The tart that Rupert Moore murdered his wife for. She just as guilty, but she was never brought to justice. I'm so sorry, Arnold. Oh, the uh, bike won't fit in the boot. Oh, no problem. Uh, see you there, sis. <laughs> May I have a word? Could you tell me why Alderman Collins' seat was removed? Oh, um, it wasn't removed. It wasn't? I'm afraid somebody set it on fire. Oh. Consolation is he wasn't sitting on it when it went up. Oh, that's meant to be funny, is it? No, I suppose not. My father did everything for this place. Cecil, you know, if he hadn't resigned when he did, he'd have gone to jail. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
That was stupid of me. <sighs> you don't have to fight his battles anymore. Perhaps it was a mistake coming back here. Why don't we just go? She is mixed up in it somehow. Who is? That old cow. Allowing her wine slowly all the way. There has to be a reason why she's always sitting on that bench. Perhaps she enjoys the view. Oh. Kind of a man creeps up on his wife in the bar. I just wondered if there was anything you needed. Cigarette, please. Hmm. Now, before you say anything, I have decided to take Arnold up on his challenge and expose that woman. Why? For heaven's sake, Cecily. My father would have liked it. No, even if it were true, what purpose does it serve now? Justice would be served. <laughs> when Melanie died. I don't want to talk about Melanie. When we lost our daughter. <laughs> When, when our angel left us, the doctor wasn't to blame. Not the anaesthetist, not the nurse. No one was to blame. It was an accident. One in a million. It just, it just happened to be our turn. Now, your investigation made a tragedy which nearly destroyed us into a nightmare which did destroy other people. Please, I don't want it to happen again, Cecily. If this woman exists, she must be what? Seventy? Leave her in peace, hmm? And Cottle, that scumbucket. You don't know Cottle like I do. <coughs> Drop him. Drop this whole business. Please, Cecily, I beg you. I was just thinking. I might like to play with Wiggly Woo. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? For Christ's sake, Cecily, the nurse tried to commit suicide. Don't you remember? But I don't play with nasty boys. I have changed my mind. Good night.
out there. There's a worm at the bottom of the garden, and his name is Wiggly Woo. He wiggles all night and he wiggles all day. The people come around, you can hear them say. at the bottom of my garden and his name is Wiggly Woo. Dr. Livingston, I presume. Dentist, was he? Who? Pyarea. <laughs> Pyarea, the fount of all inspiration. You don't say. <laughs> a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Drink deep or taste not the Pyarean spring. Ah, thank you, Mr. Encyclopedia Britannica. Mem Sarb at home, is she? If you mean Cecily, she's busy. Well, I'll just give her a knock. If you don't mind, old chum. And I'm not your old chum. Oh, yes, you are. I know you, Braxy. Says inherit all the old man's money, did she? Arnold! Oh, what a lovely surprise. You're coming in for a drink. <laughs> Who could resist such an invitation? <laughs> By the way, Braxy, I seem to have salad force without any of the old moolah. Couldn't lend me a few nickel, could you? Just till tomorrow. Thanks, Francie. Now, don't get involved, Arnold. We'll <laughs> have you there all day, hanging on to his bits and pieces, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Now look here, you ah. see, there was... You can make a start you today, take... Hugh. Arnold's bought me a book on the Rupert Moore trial. How kind. You see, Rupert Moore always insisted that he bought the cyanide at the chemist shop to kill wasps. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a chocolate one? Oh. The gate won't mend itself, Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, look here at this paragraph here. Now, this one has always struck me of being something quite important. Oh, no, I don't mean important. Yeah, all right. Well, you can have a good thing. Oh, I know all of it. Good. You don't want to get to the other side. Uh-uh. Now. What do you think we're doing? Mad, passionate love on Miss Malpass's Persian rug. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a first. Uh, I, 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 I was wondering whether I might have another biscuit. I doing? What are you doing? Uh, well, I thought, uh, I thought, well, I, I had the screws over. I, I make, I make sure the fire. A rose Moore died of cyanide poisoning. Her liver was disproportionately enlarged and discolored the most appropriate cause being the consumption of large quantities of alcohol over a long period of time. Sounds like you. He <laughs> wasn't a secret lemonade drinker then. <laughs> and within three hours of her death, she had consumed a dish of beef with mushrooms. <laughs> Why don't you apply for an exhumation order? Perhaps then they'd allow you to carry out the post-mortem right here on the table. <laughs> Sonics! Who 
Rupert Moore was very good looking and a talented painter. Conclusive proof of guilt. He also uh, made the acquaintance of several young women who came to his house as models. Well, you can't hang a man for being an artist, you can only hang his paintings. Stop the car, Hugh. Doctor, are some tube of super glue. I'm going to talk to her. Cecily, leave her alone, please. You won't have a word with the old duck. You have a word with her, Keep sir. out of this cough. Oh, oh, pardon me for breathing. I think you're becoming obsessive, Cecily. That a girl says. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. I, uh, I wondered if you might have known Rupert Moore. Why do you ask that? Because you're here so much. <laughs> Please leave me alone. I don't wish for your company. When Rupert Moore was released, he came back to Western Sea to live and had that seat made and put it out on the West Cliff. Only the locals were incensed to find that they had a murderer living in their midst. And he was acquitted of murder. Broke his window, stoned him in the street. I bet you threw the first stone, Carl. The woman in the case was never brought to justice, sir. What woman? First thing you look for in any murder, any murder, is a motive. Agreed? I suppose so. Rose Moore had no property, no money, no income, no insurance. Therefore, no motive. Therefore, cherchez la femme. It's obvious, isn't it? Not to me. He killed his wife so he could diddle this young tart. Quaddy rat demon diddly. <laughs> Mortuous and your nice eye bone. My point. <coughs> exactly. There must be a public inquiry and all the facts made public. Then I can have that seat burnt and restore my father's seat. <laughs> Christ's sake, oh. Christ's sake. You nearly killed him. Oh. Sorry, little dog. I don't see no dog. There's a tiny little dog, a Yorkshire, something of the kind. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You're yes. all right, Cecily. No thanks to you if I am. You take deep breaths, dear. Oh, take deep breaths. Oh, Calm down, oh, you'll be all right. Thanks Sorry. for the whiplash injury I think there's a problem with the suspension. Oh, I didn't know he'd had any suspension. <laughs> I wanted a word in private. Oh, yeah? Well, spit it out. Stop encouraging Cecily in this stupid obsession. Why should I do that? Common decency. <laughs> now, look here, old chum. The Memsahib and I are going great guns. How much do you want to keep away from her? Come here. Look, there's something you ought to know. I had Cess's knickers off regular before you even got to her bra strap. You always had a second hand bike, mate. Now let that be a lesson to you. And don't try it again, all right?
lady on the bench. Thanks a lot. My wife will kill me. It all fits together. What does? Constable Jones married a girl from the chemist. That. How about what? Her name was Alice. Rupert was having an affair with this tart and persuaded her to slip him some cyanide from the shop. QED. Quad erratic. Demonstrated. So why did none of this come out then? <laughs> Rupert Moore kept his mouth shut. The girl lay low while the heat was on and then married a policeman for protection. QE bloody double D. They wouldn't go after one of their own, would they? I seem unable to persuade you to give up this madness, Cecily. You will have to find another shoe for tomorrow. And another car. To his trade, eh? <laughs> Good God, it's the Red Baron. You're not going on a motorbike with him. Why not? Well, if you don't know, I can't tell you. May I ask where you're going? To complete our investigation. I can't persuade you not to do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, now, where shall we go for lunch? Anywhere you please, my lady. <laughs> Anywhere you please. Right. Lead off. <laughs> I'm a little short the old readies. Have you got a few? Just till tomorrow. Dear. Good morning. Good morning. May I? Yes. You spend a great deal of time here. I only live 200 yards away. Oh, I'm sorry. I, if I'm intruding, you must tell me. My dear, it's a public seat. But it's not for you, is it? It's, it's very private. Well, if you say so. My wife and I have bought um, Ellen Malpass's old bungalow. Oh, I hope you'll be very happy there. I found this photograph album. Um, you were a friend of Miss Malpass's. May I ask who this man is? Dearest R.M. 
He was the love and light of my life. I was hoping for a different answer. You are Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Alice Jones. I am, yes. I wish I'd never started this conversation. Please, forgive me. I'm sorry to have to do this to you, Cecily, but it's the only way I can think of stopping you. is perfectly safe with me, old chum. This is very nice, oh, Hugh. I thought you'd enjoy a salad. Mm. Very nice. Yeah, well, take that, would you? I shall have to leave you at home more often, Hugh. I'll, uh, I'll wash up. Please, start with that. <laughs> there we go. Mm. Mm. Come on, then. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Delicious. Aren't you going to ask us how we got on? Oh. Oh. How went the day? Moore says they kept cyanide in the garden shed for killing wasps, and his wife took it herself. Oh, perhaps she did. Back <laughs> to the matter is, old chum, 
there's a letter that Rose Moore was suppo supposed to have written to her sister. Mm. A letter in which she said her life wasn't worth living and she wanted to put an end to it all. Mm -hmm. Which only goes to strengthen the case against Moore. I would have thought the very opposite. Don't you see? See what? <laughs> to forge a letter like that would be a matter of the utmost simplicity to an artist like Moore. Ah, but you haven't heard the best of it yet. In the county archives, there is another letter. Which, which... Moore would have burned if he'd have known about it. Mm. In which Rose says her husband has developed an obsession for one of his models. Mm. She says, Ah, oh, next time, don't give me octopus. I hate it. Oh, sorry, I, I thought it was a favourite. No, it's all right, old chum. I saw there wasn't much on your plate, so I swapped them over. Swap my plate. Ah, she says, if I were well enough, I would go down to Westburn Terrace and confront the girl. Tomorrow, we go after the census records at Westburn Terrace and we nail her. Mm. And that's when I'll need your help here. To draw up the right kind of deposition. Me? Uh, well, you've been a magistrate, you know the sort of thing you want. You'll help us, won't you? you mm -hmm. Leave her alone, for God's sake. Leave who alone? <laughs> he knows who it is. It's the old woman on the bench, isn't it? Just stick his head down the book. Oh, where have I heard that before? It is no use lying, Hugh. I know who it is. I've known it all along. Now tell me. Tell her! Tell her! Tell her! Her name's Alice Jones. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it all along, wicked cow. How'd you find that? How did you find that? There's a photograph out. Where is it? I gave it to her. Yes! You're a very naughty boy, aren't you, Braxy? Not telling the truth to your mummy. Go to hell, God. <laughs> See you there, matey.
I thought Rupert Moore was your husband. No, no, you've got it quite wrong, my dear. But when we talked, you said dearest RM was... The light and love of my life. So he was. Ralph Montgomery. Ralph Montgomery? RM, not Rupert Moore. Ralph Montgomery was my first husband. He and Rupert Moore were the best of friends. Rupert painted that portrait of me. Both artists, you see, paintbrush and chisel. Chisel? Ralph was a woodcarver. He carved that seat for Rupert. So that's why. Inseparable they were, even in death. They died together, you know, in a road accident. Ralph Montgomery was the other man, of course. I'm very sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. And Constable Jones? My second husband. A very gentle, loving man. And Rupert Moore, did he, did he in fact murder his wife? Oh, no, of course he didn't. Rose was a sad, neurotic woman. She took her own life, I'm sorry to say. No crime, only tragedy. What a disappointment to my wife, Cecily. It's all right. Barking mad up the wrong tree altogether. It's all right. And the, the mystery woman. What mystery woman? Well, Rupert Moore's model. Or is she another figment of my wife's no, twisted imagination? No, no. It was a grand passion, all right. You bought her bungalow. She was Ellen Malpass. Ah. Ellen Malpass's Persian rug.